Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm a screenwriter and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Mike Kennedy. Mike plays guitar in the All-American Rejects, who are known for their numerous singles and platinum records. Mike is also a producer, having worked in that capacity with bands such as Red City Radio, Masked Intruder, and Screeching Weasel. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. The script I want to highlight today is a feature drama called Stay What You Are. Stay What You Are is about a workaholic, former punk rocker who desperately attempts to relive his rock and roll glory days through his daughter's 10th birthday party, while his marriage and career hang in the balance. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Mike, thanks for coming on with me today. Hey, thanks for having me on. All right, so you definitely have a full plate uh, between the All-American Rejects and your producing work where you've worked with Red City Radio and Direct Hit and Mast Intruder and then a ton of bands. How are you balancing your different commitments on a day-to-day basis? It's really day-to-day. You know, I try to, well, well, these days it's a little little easier, I guess, between like the band and production balance because the band's a little more chill and we don't do as much. And when we do, you know, it's very planned ahead. You know, production, it does sometimes get a little, you know, I can have a lot of people like asking me for stuff, especially now that I do more mixing, there's a lot more last second, like, hey, can you do this? And, and yeah, it does take some like, almost not even as much time balance as mental balance to not get burned out and actually have the, you know, retain some sort of perspective as you're working. It's just, it's just, it's a matter of just knowing when I'm, you know, feeling burnt out and avoiding that, you know, maybe delaying something that I might be able to do for a couple of days, just so I can have the, like, <laughs> you know, still have the freshness to do it properly. Going back in time a little bit, would you say that the work ethic you've developed to this point comes from how you were raised or, or was it something else in your life that instilled that? I mean, I, I always say for me, it was when, when I was 16 and found punk rock and it was that, that DIY thing and, and, you know, you can go out and just do something and you've just got to, you know, you've just got to do it. You know, what, what, yeah. what, what do you think was that sort of defining experience for you? I, you know, that's a good question. I mean, my parents were always good about teaching me lessons of like, you don't get anything for free. You know, you have to, you have to work for it. And then I, I was the same as you, you know, I got into punk as a teenager and had to make our own flyers, make our own records and put out all my band seven inches when I was in high school. And so there was always just something like that where, I don't know, I had to drive to do something. And so I just did it, you know, I <laughs> didn't, didn't wait around for someone else to do it. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm, Definitely the same way. You kind of touched on this a minute ago, but how would you say that you're structuring your day to day now to, you know, be as productive as possible in what you're doing? It's, I don't even think I have like a conscious structure as much as when I'm in a project, I'm just driven to do it, you know, until I get it done. Yeah. When I'm in the middle of something, I'm, I'm just always working, always that's how it's on my mind. And, and I guess, you know, I've, I've fallen into like, say it's a, like a producing thing. Like I'll fall into a schedule of like, I work this time and this time, take a break and then work this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing I ever like necessarily planned out, but it's just where I found like, okay, this is how I can do it. And my day is works and I'm still remain happy. And I wish I had like a really solid answer, but it's just like, 
yeah, when I'm motivated, I'm motivated and I just do it. So a, a recurring theme in this podcast I've found has been that the people who I'm talking to have done things in their life or in their career that set themselves apart from their peers, you know, and, and what would you, what would be an example of something, whether it's the band, when the band was trying to break in, you know, in those early days or trying to always be pushing forward. And then when you're working on, you know, working in your production work, what are those things that either you did or the band did or whatever to set yourselves apart from your peers and create value almost? That's tough. Cause I don't know that we did stuff that was particularly different than everyone else. You know, we just, we hit the road, got in the van and never got out of it. And, uh, so, I mean, a lot of bands did that and did not have success, but, you know, I, I think that maybe like when, when it comes to the band is the, there's the intangible thing of the songs just did the work too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's not something you can just fight for <laughs> necessarily. You got to yeah. have that, you know, our, our my singer and, and guitar player who like wrote the songs together, you know, that's just a talent that very few people are blessed with. I mean, there is something to say for, you know, taking it seriously and, and, and putting in like, what, especially once we did start having some success, there's like just the grueling shit that you don't want to do <laughs> like yeah. press or early morning radio performances and all this stuff where it's just like, you know, it's for the greater good. And so you do it, uh, even though it's, it doesn't, isn't fun at the time. And it, but at the same time, it is like, even when it sucks, it's kind of like, yeah, but we're getting asked to do this. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of great. This is you work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I don't know that there's something in particular that other bands don't do, or isn't just like what you'd normally think of that we did. It just, uh, and same with the production stuff. It's just, I get into it and I get excited about it and I just, I just do it. I mean, it almost sounds like in a way you could, you could almost interpret it as you guys are always open and willing to do things. You know, I, I think not everyone, there might've been other bands out there who went, uh, we're, we, we just spent nine months on the road. We don't feel like doing, you know, the, the radio show we do, you know, mm. we're, we're going to pass on that. But maybe that radio show is the thing that, you know, push the next single along or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, I, th I sure. think there's a lot of that for, you know, that other people may have taken a rest where maybe you didn't. Yeah, there, yeah, there could be something for that. I mean, we definitely were always, yeah, we were always willing to do what we had to do in those kind of things. I don't know. We, we just, we did always work very hard, like, like even, uh, you know, doing videos, which for me was always such a slog, but we were always tried to be very on top of that. And I feel like for the most part, like, I'm very proud of our video catalog. <laughs> like, we tried to make sure we didn't make duds. And I think we only let, like, one or two slide by. <laughs> <laughs> um, how important would you say persistence and perseverance are to a successful work ethic, especially in, you know, the creative arts? I mean, I, it, it very important, I think, because particularly with stuff like recording, it can be a slog and it can really drain you. And... It's very, it would be very easy to give up <laughs> at points or, or not even get up, give up, but maybe be like, just compromise and be like, eh, it's fine, you know, just to get through it. And you, you can't to do something really good. You have to like fight through those slogs. And so, yeah, I think it's real important. I mean, that's sure. the, that's one of the things that I encounter with, with screenwriting is it's really easy to just be like, Ah, this is this is not really working out. This is taking too long. You know, this whatever mm -hmm. this this beat in this script is kind of it's fine. You know, it's a, that's exactly what you're saying. It's it's fine. Let me just get past it. But putting in the work and the consistency, I've seen my peers kind of start dropping away. You know, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm hoping not necessarily just a war of attrition, but you know, as <laughs> you know, it, it, the longer you hang around, the better you're going to get at things, and you know, the more likely you are to to succeed in some way. Totally. And yeah, and, and, and yeah, you have to, you have to keep at it. I mean, just repetition is, you know, what, what helps you get better. What in your personal work ethic do you think has contributed to the success that you've had? You know, I think there is just, you know, a stick to itiveness and, and I mean, I, I should say with like the producing stuff too, I'm lucky in that I have the band to make it so that 
I can pick and choose what I want to produce, you know, like it's not like something like where I'm just desperately trying to find work. So I'm picking projects that I really am excited about, which I think, you know, obviously helps to be excited for and, and to do the the work that can be grueling. It's just sticking with it. And, and yeah, like I was saying, just fighting through, fighting through things where you sometimes can get worn down and, and just making sure you're not compromising or half-assing anything at any point. Yeah, because I don't know. I, I always want anything that I'm like putting my name on to be something I'm proud to be like, hey, my name's on that. Yep, absolutely. So I think that that's part of it too. Anything that you want to mention or plug before we go or, or talk about anything that you've been working on recently? Um, yeah, uh, sometime in the coming months, there's going to be a new Screeching Weasel album that I produced and play guitar on. Then also a band called A Vulture Wake, which is Chad from All's newer band. Um, so that was exciting. So I'm a huge all fans. So to get to record, that was awesome. Yeah, I think that's it for now. You know, Rejects plan uh, that when we we're young festival in October. And so, yeah, that, that, that's all my plugs. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on with me, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at the Artist's Work Ethic and check out theartistsworkethic.com.